In this video, we're going to discuss the sampling distribution of the sample mean. So let's go ahead and get started. So the sampling distribution for the sample mean is very similar to the sampling distribution for sample proportions. The important difference here is instead of calculating the standard deviation of the proportion of our sample, here we're calculating the standard deviation of the mean of our sample, that is SDY bar, the mean of our sample. And this is equal to sigma divided by root n, where sigma is the standard deviation of our population and n is our sample size. So let's go ahead and work through a few practice problems. So here's our first practice problem. Uh, cholesterol levels in healthy adults average about 215 milligrams per deciliter with a standard deviation of 30 milligrams per deciliter and are roughly normally distributed. If the cholesterol levels of a sample of 42 healthy adults are taken, what is the probability of the, that the mean cholesterol level of the sample will be no more than 215 <clears throat> milligrams per deciliter? Okay, so let's go ahead and start by calculating the standard deviation of the mean of our sample is equal to sigma divided by root n. In this case, we're told that the standard deviation uh, of healthy adults is 30 milligrams per deciliter and we're told that we have a sample size of 42. So we're going to take uh, 30 and we're gonna divide by the square root of 42. So 30 divided by the square root of 42 is equal to 4.6291. So, what are we asking? Well, the question has told us that it's normally distributed and it's centered around a mean of 215 milligrams per deciliter. In question A, we're asked that it will be no more than 215. So 215. So what is the probability that it falls to the left here? Intuitively, we know that 50% of our observations will be less than 215 and 15% or sorry 50% of our observations will be above 215 milligrams per deciliter but let's go ahead and just prove it so we're going to calculate our z score so our z is equal to x bar minus the mean of our population divided by our standard deviation of x bar so in this case 215 minus 215 divided by 4.6291 gives us a z-score of zero, right? We can draw our standard normal curve. Our standard normal curve looks like this, centered around zero. And of course we know the area to the left is gonna be equal zero. So it's probability that z is less than or equal to zero, it's gonna be equal to 0 0.50. We can just double check that. So let's go ahead to our Z table. And indeed, what do we notice here? When we have a Z score of 0, 0.0, we have a probability to the left of 0 0.500000. So that is exactly what we did in question A. So B, what was the probability that it will be between 205 and 225? Okay. So B, let's just draw what this looks like. Our standard normal, or sorry, not our standard normal, our normal curve, we're centered around 215. And we're asked between 205 and 225. So we're gonna say 205 and 225. And we're interested in what is the probability that it shows up in this green shaded region. So let's first calculate our z-score for 205. So x bar minus mu divided by our standard deviation of x bar. So this is 205 minus 215 divided by the standard deviation that we calculated previously of 4.6291. So 205 minus 215 divided by 4.6291 gives us a z-score of negative 2.16.
We can calculate our second Z score. So Z is equal to 225 minus 215 divided by 4.6291. So 225 minus 215 divided by 4.6291. Which is equal to 2.16. So we can visualize this on a standard normal curve. We draw it, it looks like this again, centered around zero, and we have two z scores. We have one here at negative 2.16 and the other one here at positive 2.16. And we're asked what is the probability that it's between these two values? So the probability that negative 2.16 is less than or equal to Z, less than or equal to 2.16, is equal to the probability that Z is less than or equal to 2.16 minus the probability that Z is less than or equal to negative 2.16. So let's go and find the probability of 2.16 on our Z table. Oops. So negative, uh, sorry, 2.16, so 2.1, 2.1, 2 6 is right here. So 0 0.98461, 0 0.98461 minus negative 2.16, so we go here. And we get negative 2.16, which is right here, which is 0 0.01539. 0 0.01539. So 0 0.98461 minus 0 0.01539 gives us 0 0.96922. So that's the probability that it is between 205 and 225. Okay, C. What is the probability it will be less than 200? So C, we're going to calculate our Z score. So this is 200 minus 215 divided by 4.6291. So 200 minus 215 divided by 4.62. 91 gives us a z score of negative 3.24. So we'll draw our standard normal curve centered around zero. We have a z score here of negative 3.24. And we're asked what is the probability that it's less than that? So the probability that z is less than or equal to negative 3.24. We're just going to look up the area to the left on our Z table, so negative 3.24. So we find negative 3.24, which is right here. So 0 0.00060. And then finally, what is the probability it will be greater than 220? So D, Z is equal to 220 minus 215 divided by the standard deviation that we calculated. <clears throat> so 220 minus 215 divided by 4.6291 gives us 1.08. So we could just again draw our standard normal curve. Center around zero. We have our Z score here of 1.08. We're interested in what is the probability that it's greater than this value. So the probability that Z is greater than or equal to 1.08 is equal to 1 minus the probability that Z is less than or equal to 1.08. So we go up and look up 1.08 in our Z table. And we get the value here of 1.08, which is right here. 
So 0 0.85993, so 1 minus 0 0.85993. gives us 0 0.14007. Okay, so that's the probability that we see a mean of our sample greater than 220. And we can just draw what that would look like using our normal curve here, right centered around 215. We have an observed value of 220. So the green shaded region here is 0 0.1400. Seven. Okay. <clears throat> so fantasy football fans are highly invested in the NFL and often want to know more about how much their favorite players earn. An online article indicates that the average NFL player salary is $2.7 million with a standard deviation of $0.75 million. What is the probability that a random sample of 30 players would have an average of $2.4 million or lower? Okay, so we're, we know the average of our population here, which is $2.7 million, and we know our value for our standard deviation, which is 0 0.75 million. Let's go ahead and calculate the standard deviation of the mean of our sample. So this is going to equal the standard deviation of our population divided by the square root of n. We also know that we have an n of 30 in question a. So this is equal to 0 0.75 divided by the square root of 30. So 0 0.75 divided by the square root of 30 gives us 0 0.1369 approximately is our standard deviation. So what is the probability that a random sample of 30 players would have an average of $2.4 million or lower? We're going to have to assume that there's a normal distribution that we can apply here. So let's go ahead and calculate it. So Z is equal to the mean of our sample minus the expected mean of our population divided by the standard deviation of the mean of our sample. So this is equal to 2.4 million minus our expected value, which is 2.7 million divided by our standard deviation that we just calculated right here, which is 0 0.1369. So 2.4 minus 2.7 divided by 0 0.1369 gives us a Z score of negative 2.19. So if we draw it on our standard normal curve, it looks like this. Centered around zero. We got a z-score here of negative 2.19. And we're asked what is the probability that it would be this score or lower. So the probability that z is less than or equal to negative 2.19. Well, let's just go look up negative 2.19 on our z table. So we'll just erase these values because we don't need them for this question. So negative 2.19, that's going to be this value right here. So 0 0.01426. So that is the probability that we would see a mean of less than 2.4 million. So we could just draw our normal curve if we wanted to visualize it. Centered around 2.7 if we had a sample mean of 2.4. The area underneath the curve here is equal to 0 0.01426. And then finally, we had one more question here. What is the probability that a random sample of 50 players would have the average of $2.4 million or higher? Okay, so we have to recalculate our standard deviation because we have a different sample size here. So our standard deviation of X bar is equal to the standard deviation of our population, that is 0 0.75 divided by the square root of our sample size, which is 50. So 0 0.75 divided by the square root of 50 gives us a standard deviation of 0 
uh, 6, 1. If we round to four decimal points. And then let's go ahead and ask, calculate our Z score here. So two, for 2.4 million, so Z is equal to 2.4 minus 2.7 divided by the standard deviation for the sample size of 50, which is 0 0.1061. So 2.4 minus 2.7 divided by uh, 0 0.1061, which gives us a z-score of negative 2.8275. So we can go and we're asked, what is the probability that they would have more? So we have our standard normal curve here centered around zero. We have a z-score of negative 2.83. So what is the probability that z is greater than or equal to negative 2.83? Well, this is gonna be one minus the probability that Z is less than or equal to negative 2.83. So let's look up negative 2.83 on our Z table. So negative 2.83 is right here of 0 0.00233. So one minus 0 0.00283. Sorry, 0 0.00233. So 1 minus 0 0.00233 is going to be 0 0.99767. Okay, and just like that, we've used uh, sample means, and we have used that to calculate a variety of z-scores. That's it for this video, but if you found that it helped to make statistics easy, consider showing your support by giving the video a like. And if you still need more help with statistics, then consider subscribing to the channel if you haven't already. I look forward to solving many more problems with you next time.